So now continuing our discussion on ecdysozoa, we remember that ecdysozoa animals are going to be those that undergo ecdysis, the molting. Um, as they grow, they shed their external skeleton, their external uh, covering, let's say. Now, the next phylum of interest to us is one of the most important phylum that you'll study in all of this animal world uh, diversity that we're looking at, and that is the phylum Arthropoda. Phylum Arthropoda. Okay, so this is a very, very big phylum, huge phylum, so huge in fact, that this is going to be the largest phylum of all animals. So this is the most successful, I would say, in terms of how much they have, how many species they have. They have the largest phylum, and because they are the largest phylum, they have the most species of organisms, um, and specifically largest phylum of the animal world. So, in this phylum Arthropoda, we're going to also establish the fact that, uh, sort of a side note, is that these are all coelomates, so let's not forget that. Anything that uh, is of this huge phylum is a coelomate with a true uh, fluid-filled uh, cavity layer. And then, in terms of its structure, these are the important concepts that we need to know about Arthropoda. Um, the name might be unfamiliar to you, but the organisms that encompass arthropoda are definitely familiar to you because they're so expansive, so widespread. Let's see why. Their structure plays a big role in that. First and foremost, their structure contains a segmented body. Now, we saw that this segmented body was present within phylum Annelida, but phylum Annelida was not part of our Echidysozoa. It was our final Lophotrochozoa. So it's, this is sort of a continuation, a further evolution of this idea of segmentation being a big successful characteristic because it was very successful in the Annelida. Now it's successful in this huge large phyla of species. So what does this mean here? In the segmented body of an arthropoda, what this is going to lead to is a greater form of specialization. We're going to have within this segmented body specialized, let me rewrite that, specialized. Um, specifically, the segmented body will be specialized to perform specific functions. Every segment will have a specific function, and together they will form a nice coherent organism with a great ability to do these very specific, very discrete functions. Now, specifically, what do I mean by this? This segmented body will consist of a very noticeable head region. It will consist of a very notable, what we call, thorax region. And it will also consist of a very noticeable abdomen region. Three key regions based off of the segments within the body. Now, the thorax region is where we usually will have the legs of the organism, so we'll see legs for the first time. And we also will see for the first time wings. So you might have a good guess as to what these organisms are if they're so all over the place. And in the abdomen section, this is just going to be a posterior segment, okay? The posterior segment. And the reason why we have posterior, anterior, dorsal, ventral is because we have that bilateral symmetry, right, from our first lecture on animal diversity. Okay, so this is our segmented body. It's specialized. Specialized is good in the animal world, and it's specialized to perform specific functions, which we'll see. Now, furthermore, in terms of the structure, this is where the name comes from. Arthro, we know poda means feet, uh, or extensions actually is the correct term, but arthro means jointed. And specifically, phylum arthropoda contains what we call jointed appendages, thus the name. Appendages are extensions or just sections, let's say. So we have this segmented body, but this segmented body is jointed. It's not individual pieces that are separate from one another. There are joints between the segments, and that's what we call jointed appendages. The reason why this is so good is because it allows the entire segmented body, though in separate segments, to work cohesively together, to do fancy things like swim. So we know swimming has been seen in a lot of the phyla that we've studied so far, um, in this lecture, but things like walking, that's not been seen that much at least because we looked at worms, we looked at mollusks, we looked at octopi, those things don't really walk. They all are in a marine environment, but now we can swim, we can walk, and we also have very important sensory structures. 
Sensory structure is aka the ability to sense things that are in our environment, the ability to smell, the ability to see. Those are things that are very, very prominent within phylum arthropoda. Those are things that are going to certainly allow these organisms to be very successful. And when I say successful, I don't mean the fact that they can go out and hunt and kill things and be the top predators of the world. What I mean by successful is the fact that these are seen all over the place. What I mean by successful is that they contain the most species. It's the largest phyla. Thus, the, this means that these characteristics are of success. They allow organisms to survive and reproduce and develop and evolve into many different species as seen through this jointed appendage and segmented body structure thus far. Now, in addition to the jointed appendages, the last thing I want you to understand about their structure is the fact that they also have what's called a jointed exoskeleton. This is key here. They have an exoskeleton. This is good and bad because though they're so successful, they do have a limitation. Remember, they are part of ecdysozoa. They have to molt as they're growing. We'll get to that in just a second. So what is this jointed exoskeleton? First of all, this exoskeleton will consist of chitin and other proteins. And if we remember, chitin is the polymer of glucose, but it's an N-containing, a nitrogen-containing polymer, um, and it's very good with its structure. It's a very nice structural polymer. Um, chitin and proteins will consist and make up the exoskeleton of our arthropoda. In addition, this exoskeleton covers the entire body. Okay, so we have nothing that's exposed. No critical elements are exposed to the harmful outside world. We have a nice exoskeleton to cover everything. Okay, this is going to be good and bad in just a second. We'll see. So we have thing I would remember is definitely chitin and the fact that it covers the entire body. So we have some great advantages to this jointed exoskeleton, which I'll write down right down here. So let's look at these great advantages that um, sort of add to the success of these organisms. First and foremost, protection. This is a structural polymer, and it's good at protecting the organism. Okay, The organism will not be flimsy in any way. Yes, you can step and kill an insect, let's say, or a bug, something that has this chitin structure, but you have to think about it in terms of everything else. In this sense, this jointed exoskeleton has never been seen before. This is the first time we're seeing anything like it, and thus we have a nice protective mechanism. In addition, this actually is going to be a good structure that limits water loss because now a consequence of walking, of leaving the water, not just swimming all the time and being an aquatic animal, is the fact that you may be dehydrated. You don't have water constantly around you. Well, everything on the inside of you is not only protected, but it is limited to losing the water that's making it up, let's say, because water is a big component of all living things. And thus, if you have a jointed exoskeleton, this chitin surrounding structure, your water loss will be limited. And also, I think this is a huge, huge part of this arthro word, is the fact that this skeleton provides points of attachment for muscle. Points of attachment for muscles. And when you can have muscles attached to your skeleton, attached to your appendages, attached to your segmented body, you can do fancy things like swim, walk, fly, all of those things that insects do. Um, I sort of gave it away already what the arthropoda really are. And thus you have this great advantage uh, within you because of your jointedness, because of your arthro, okay, your arthro capabilities. But of course, with all great advantages come the major disadvantage, something you should remember about arthropoda, why they aren't, why, so now you might be asking, okay, they're so successful, why are they so tiny, why are they so small? Well, that's because that's the disadvantage. The fact that you have a jointed ex exoskeleton, it means that you, your growth is limited. Their growth is very, very limited. You might be asking, okay, since they're so successful, why haven't they become as big as humans or as big as a lion? Well, that's because their structure itself limits its own growth. And this is because they need to undergo ecdysis. These organisms, they need to molt. Specifically, the exoskeleton, I'll say, needs to molt. And because it needs to molt, that means you need to shed exoskeleton so you need to get rid of your exoskeleton for a moment of time. Okay, you need to get rid of that calcium, usually that chitin, sorry, chitin exoskeleton. And when you shed that exoskeleton on top of it, you will grow a new larger one. Now, 
This process seems nice and easy in the way that I presented it, but just remember this is a long, strenuous process that takes time, that takes energy, that takes metabolic energy, and it's thus as an investment. Okay, so this and exoskeleton doesn't come free. It comes with this cost of your own growth being limited. And that covers our phylum arthropoda. Just to give you some examples of arthropoda, things like centipedes, spiders, ticks, horseshoe crabs, scorpions, all of those things are ancient and successful insects, let's say. A lot of the times when people think insects, arthropoda, it's a good way to understand the arthropoda. Very successful group of organisms, very successful because of so many different species of insects, so many different species of these types of organisms. A lot of it has to do with their successful structure. And that covers our ecdysozoa and the arthropoda specifically.